Hi everyone, welcome back to the Get A Brew channel. So today we're going to look at yeast and specifically rehydration versus direct pitch or dry pitching. Like, let me just start by saying we're going to go through the differences between the two and very quickly show you how to do a yeast starter. But scientific trials and R&D trials at Lalamont have shown that there's no significant difference from creating a yeast starter, i.e. rehydrating the yeast packet that you get and just dry pitching. So the benefits would have to be to suit your process. So if you're in a commercial brewery and you're wanting to do inline dosing or if you're wanting to add products to protect the yeast like um, go firm for example those would be reasons why you would choose to rehydrate as opposed to dry pitching all our yeast is cold stored here at get a root and it's shipped to you express so it should arrive in optimum condition so whenever it comes to dry pitching what you want to do is ensure that you one you've stored it correctly so put it into the fridge whenever it arrives and then ensure that the packet is sanitized whenever you're using it taking into account the contact time that the sanitizer may require so a quick spray around the packet not forgetting to spray the scissors that you're going to use to open the packet and then just literally pitch the yeast just sprinkling it directly on top of the wort it's that simple okay, so if you're wanting to rehydrate your yeast at home you want to be doing it in something like this sort of setup so magnetic stir machine the stir the magnetic stir bar inside and then an Erlen Mayer flask now um, you want to ensure that everything's sterile obviously because you're creating a yeast starter um, a little point of note, don't use reverse osmosis water because it can cause shock for the yeast whenever you go to add the yeast. So what you want to do is take your packet of yeast, so as it said, um, some sanitization solution just to ensure that the packet's sterile and then again ensuring that your scissors are covered. The liquid that you have inside is just going to be water and what you're wanting to do um, is, is get that water to between 30 and 35 degrees and you take your yeast, on this occasion we're using American East Coast uh, New England yeast and just to add the yeast to the water just by sprinkling it on top. Okay, so general rule of thumb would be that you take water 10 times the weight or size of the yeast that you're adding and then we once we have the yeast in the liquid on the Erdemeyer flask allow it say 10 or 15 minutes to allow it to settle then we give it a really gentle mix allow it to sit for another five minutes and then at that stage if we need to adjust the temperature so you want the yeast uh, that you've rehydrated to be um, close within the tolerance of the fermentation temperature so if it's 30 or 35 degrees at this stage what you're going to want to do is adjust that using small wort additions so um, say you want to ferment at 22 degrees you would add a little bit of wort just to drop the temperature down to 22 degrees um, on this particular yeast it's New England yeast New England yeast um, be aware that the, you need to almost use a lot more yeast than you normally would because the gram per litre is almost twice the, twice the amount that it would be for a Bry 97 American ale yeast for example so it has the the pitching rate information on the yeast packet so just pay attention to that before you go adding it to your ward so that you can ensure that you've got sufficient yeast to carry out a healthy and vigorous fermentation. So. We've allowed this to settle for 15 minutes. It's just, I suppose, the best way of describing it is that um, you don't want to shock the yeast. Just going to give it a gentle stir after allowing it to settle for 15 minutes. So um, I have the magnetic stir bar in the Erlen Mare from when we started. And we're just going to give it a really gentle stir. Stir bar gets going with the magnetic stir plate. We give that a little mix and um, helps with dispersion and getting the rehydration going well. You put this on a gentle stir on the magnetic stir plate, let that go for five minutes. What you're wanting to do now is ensure that the temperature of the rehydrated yeast is close to the fermentation temperature that you're going to do. Now you can adjust that temperature by adding little bits of wort to bring it within the temperature range. So this would be suitable now to take off and pitch into our wort that we've created. 
All we wanted to do today was take you through the difference between rehydrating yeast and pitching yeast dry. There's R&D trials have showed no significant difference. Um, we just want to show you how to do both. Um, perhaps you want to consider getting one of these setups to allow you to get the yeast cells to grow by creating a starter and building up a small packet into a larger pitch. We'll cover that in later videos, but today, rehydration versus dry pitching, no significant difference. It's entirely your choice and whether it suits your setup for inline dosing or whether you like to just sprinkle it directly on top of the wort. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy brewing.